Hello, everyone, and welcome back to your favorite podcast, Stop the Internet Podcast. My name is Kelly. I'm the host, one of the hosts. This is... Rebecca. Woohoo! Rebecca is my friend. (laughs) Me and Jimmy did the same thing. I'm like, what do I say about the friends? Yeah. Well, we're new friends. Yes. This is an interesting dynamic today because Mm -hmm. we're talking about friendship. True. And Rebecca and I recently became friends. But I feel like we were meant to meet. I think so, too. (laughs) When I met you, I was like, oh, my God, wow, another creative person. Rebecca is a copywriter. I am. Fun times. What's your favorite part about working in the creative field? Oh, my God. Um, I would say just, like, being able to write every day is kind of a cool concept when you think about it. Like, most people obviously, like, don't do that. But if you're passionate about what you're doing, I think that's, like, a cool sign. Definitely. So I think just being, like, passionate about writing and being a little writer. Love that. <laughs> it's a very cool job. Yeah. So I figured we'd talk about friendships today. And there's so many different friendship dynamics. And I do think it's going to be interesting because it's September now. Rebecca and I met at the end of May of this year. That's wild. I know. So we had a lot of mutual friends. Yes, we did. That's how we met. So wait, June, July, August. So we're like our four month anniversary. Yeah, not even. Coming up. I know. Crazy. Also, as soon as I asked Rebecca about the podcast, I couldn't even finish my sentence. And she's like, yes. Yeah. And I said, okay. Creative people, like the minds are synced. (laughs) Yes. Okay. So I think let's jump into it. Here we go. I think my best friend might be obsessed with me. I, I was like, yeah, that happens to me too. All the time. <laughs> and even people I'm not friends with. <laughs> Just kidding. I, 28 female, have been married to my husband for seven years. We dated through high school and got married straight out of college. Even when we began dating, my best friend, we'll call her Sienna, disliked him. She was extremely jealous that all the time I used to spend with her was pretty much cut in half because I was spending my time with him. We actually took a break from being friends because she felt like he took up too much of my time, and then we reconciled later after she also got a boyfriend. She sort of bounced through relationships. There's always been an excuse about how this guy isn't right, that guy was crazy, this is just a friends with benefits. And through all of this, I've been her most consistent friend and confidant. My husband and I moved about four hours away from our hometown right before having kids because it was affordable for us. Last year, Sienna moved to the same town. Where the obsession comes in is this. I have two small children, two and four, and since Sienna has moved here and doesn't really have a lot of friendships in place, she spends nearly every day at my house. She still doesn't like my husband and says snide remarks pretty often. He's very non-confrontational and also just doesn't value her opinion. I feel like she's watching our family dynamic and then later picks apart little things hubby does to criticize her and tell me how I could do better. I'm a stay-at-home mom and I do literally all the housework and childcare. He only works four days a week but takes odd jobs pretty regularly. He's definitely around. He's a terrible housekeeper, but he's a great playmate with the kids. He cooks dinner maybe once a week and will at least put folded laundry away. Our setup can get over overwhelming when he works more than I expect him to, but this is pretty much what we agreed on when we decided to become a single income household. Sienna will text me as soon as she leaves, telling me how he leaves me alone too much with the kids. He should offer to let me have more alone time with her for the sake of my sanity. He should do more to keep me happy with romantic dinners or getaways and just all the ways he's not up to par. I definitely don't feel this way. She's also consistently made passes at me after having too much to drink. Passes that include very lengthy, explicit descriptions of all the things she would do to me if my husband would just let her. Oh. <laughs> the next day, she always swears she doesn't remember saying anything she said before I even approach her, but I don't believe it. In December, my entire family was in isolation. We all got COVID, but at staggered times. So instead of just 10 days, we were quarantined for 20. Then hubby and I got the flu literally the day after our isolation period was over. The flu was worse than COVID. We're both still sort of suffering from brain fog, sniffles, and fatigue. But Sienna texts me or calls me consistently every day asking when hubby is going to let me have company again. We've been eerie about seeing any 
anyone at this point because of how hard we all got hit with illnesses this winter, and she works with small children. Now she's taken to sending me pictures of my own children with and without her captions, like, let me see my kids, or don't they miss their other parent? This just rubs me the wrong way, like as if in her mind, she's made us into a family and my husband is the interloper. I find it creepy. My husband shockingly thinks she's just awkwardly trying to show how much she misses hanging out and cares about us and that I shouldn't take it personally. I feel like Sienna and I need a break from our friendship because I am not comfortable with the direction things have gone in. My first thought is this sounds like a thriller in the making. So true. She should lock her doors at night and her children's bedroom doors. (laughs) It's giving cradle robber vibes. (laughs) It's very concerning. I think it could go one of two ways. One is that. And then two is that this girl's just very, very sad and insecure and lonely. But the little comments about the, do my kids miss me? Do they miss their other parent? Mm -hmm. That's a little much. That's very much overstepping boundaries. Totally. But when she made the comment about how Sienna is making a pass at her when she's drunk, that tracked. Because it's like, is she obsessed with you or is she in love with you? Such a good point. And I think she's in love with you and you need to, I don't know, is it like a sit down conversation that you have with her where Mm -hmm. you're like, hey, what's going on? Like, why is she letting 10 years go by? They've been friends since high school, did it say? They've been friends for a while, yeah, since hometown. I would not let this resentment build up anymore and maybe maybe say something. I think she should definitely say something, especially because Sienna hates her husband. Right. I feel like Sienna is just trying to make the husband look really bad because even OP, by the way, OP is the person that originally posted this story. So when we say OP, it's the author of the story. I feel like OP is justifying her relationship with her husband when it seems so normal Normal. and healthy. Yes. Agreed. She's like, oh, but he does this, this, and this. And like, I'm a stay at home. It's like, that's fine. That's what you agreed to. That's all very healthy. You you don't have to show us how he's a good husband. He's just doing that. Right. I wasn't hearing any red flags regarding the husband, just with the friend. Yeah. And also, I think this is like, it speaks to a larger issue in friendships where if your friend doesn't like your partner, do you say something? Do you kind of let it play out? But this is different because they're married. Right. So you kind of have to just like, unless something insane was going on I really think it's like if I just don't like this person for my own personal reasons or like sometimes I've been in situations where you're like okay I wouldn't date them but like my friend is happy right again nothing he's doing sounds weird or out of line I think the girl's just trying to create a false narrative in OP's head to make her think that her husband is doing something wrong when I think she knows that he's not Mm -hmm. I think you're right I think she's in love with her I think so Uh, majorly Majorly. which is so sad because it's not gonna happen (laughs) or at least that's how it seems as of now yeah if you have made passes take the hint you know it's interesting too that she claims to not remember when she says those things because she's clearly not ready to talk about it oh she she... remembers yeah exactly (laughs) the more i analyze i think you're right i think she's in love with op and she's too scared to Mm -hmm. say anything and that's why she only says things like that when she's drunk so that she can claim not to remember it or whatever and yeah she's trying to get rid of the husband again thriller vibes like it's that obsessive part of it that I'm a little bit fixated on and it's giving me creep creep vibes but it's also a friend from high school so it's like obviously you're friends with her for a reason but Sometimes I think about that, though. It is obviously you cannot describe a lifelong friendship in a few paragraphs on Reddit. Right. But what does Sienna (laughs) give you? Yes, that's true. What do you gain from the friendship? Because it seems like she's taking a lot. She's taking her piece. She's She's, a taker. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. A lot seems negative. So unless you're getting a lot out of this and it would be worth it to continue the friendship, I would say definitely distance yourself. Create boundaries for sure, which isn't always easy, but the way forward here. Yeah. And a way to keep her in OP's life without being like we're not friends again I think boundaries are needed firm ones again cradle robber vibes I think it could start with a conversation where OP says to Sienna I don't appreciate it when you say x y and z about my husband we're in a healthy place I appreciate the concern but we're good right now and if anything changes I'll let you know and see what happens if she respects that and stops commenting on the husband that's a step in the right direction second conversation is it makes me feel uncomfortable when you say my kids or their other parent yikes (laughs) love that you love my kids but it's a little concerning yeah you're being a pushover yeah (laughs) 
Yeah, you're fucking stupid. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but like you need to stop letting her walk all over you because she's taking advantage of it. Definitely. And she thinks she can get away with things like saying she's a third parent is wild to me. I know. And she's at their house every single day. Oh, no. Change the locks. <laughs> Do something here. Agreed. I think honest communication. Tell her that the comments make you uncomfortable and then see if it improves. If it doesn't improve gotta cut it off because she Mm -hmm. obviously doesn't respect you even if she is in love with you and also if it's just making you uncomfortable in general and you don't care to continue the friendship or you won't be that hurt if the friendship ends just don't hang out with her as much yeah then you've learned that along the way and that's a valuable lesson in any relationship honesty is a pillar of friendship and like you can't be honest with her then that's a sign that this is not a good friendship slay (laughs) that was so good slay (laughs) (laughs) On Jimmy's episode, I kept saying period, and I explained that Jimmy and I had spent the entire weekend together with our friend Callie, who says that all the time. Rebecca was also she there. Does. Yeah, she does. <laughs> Jimmy claims that it's because she's a middle school teacher, and so all her children just say period all day. I don't blame them. I love it. It's I'm... such a great way to yeah. end a <laughs> sentence or a topic. I also like Slay. I love Slay. Have you brought in Bedussi to the podcast yet? I tried to introduce Bedussi. I think I have to just... It's it's gonna be hard to explain yeah. while talking about these things, but yeah. guys, I hinted at it on the last episode. But Dusty, it's like the verb form of John. It mm-hmm. means everything. It also means nothing. You can bedussy. You could bedussy over something. Sienna is bedussying your marriage. <laughs> Sienna is trying to bedussy your marriage so that she can bedussy you. And so, okay. therefore, you need to bedussy her first. <laughs> And if that made sense to you, I think we could all be friends. I think, yeah, I think that's how we close out that story. Yes. (laughs) Good luck, OP. Mm -hmm. I am so excited to hear your take on this one. Oh, no. Should I tell my ex's brother's wife that he was on Tinder? My ex and I had a really bad breakup. He cheated on me and it kind of dragged on. I was never close with his brother's girlfriend, just hung out at gatherings and stuff. Sweet girl. She chased after him while in college as he was being a fuck boy. Anyways, my ex and I broke up in 2021. A couple months ago, I matched with my ex's brother. I swiped right out of curiosity and we ended up matching and he immediately unmatched me. I thought he and his longtime girlfriend broke up, so I didn't think much of it until a few weeks after that. I see wedding photos of them. I was cheated on by my ex. Their father is a continuous cheater on their stepmom and now the other brother. I don't know whether I should tell her to save her some heartache or just stay out of it and let her figure it out. I'd most likely do it anonymously because I don't want to be associated with that mess. I also have screenshots of his Tinder profile. Any advice? Don't say anything. <gasps> yeah, that's how I feel. Because, really? Because it's your ex's brother. It's not your p- current boyfriend's brother. And even then, you're making something that's not your problem your problem. I feel the opposite. Uh- <laughs> I think you should definitely tell her, especially if it's anonymous. Yeah, that's interesting. But how would it be anonymous? Like, you're going to mail her a letter? You could. <laughs> if you really wanted it to be anonymous. Create, like, a fake Instagram. Or just have it <clears throat> have an email address from grade school that nobody knows is yours. Like, remember everyone had, like, hippie543 or whatever at yes. hotmail.com? Angelstar238. Yeah, mine was, I don't even remember, animal love or something. Yeah. <laughs> I think tell her. What's your reasoning? I think regardless of who was saying sending it to me I would want to know and I just don't think it's weird to reach out yeah I don't think it's weird I just think it doesn't sound like she was super invested with the brother and his girlfriend and I also feel like I need more context like did it say how long she was with the ex like is this someone she hung out with often or just kind of saw like at family dinners the brother's girlfriend she would only see at gatherings and family stuff yeah so that's why I'm like like do you really have a horse in this race like I feel like you don't but if it was a stranger and you knew that this random stranger was being cheated on would you tell a random stranger I don't know I wouldn't want to but I think I would especially if I could do it anonymously well okay it was he so he was on tinder before the wedding Right. Arguably, he left Tinder after the wedding. He probably shouldn't have been on Tinder, though. Well, I think he probably got, like, the wedding, what's it called? Wedding jitters. A form of wedding jitters. And then was, like, maybe got spooked that he saw you. It made him realize, I'm in love with my wife. I'm going to delete this app. 
And I think you need to find out that information before you go potentially breaking up a newlywed situation. But if that was the case and he truly had nothing to hide, although as a wife, that would still make me feel very sad if my husband Same. had pre-wedding jitters and then I got on Tinder. If that is the case and a stranger was like, I just saw your husband on Tinder, then she could honestly ask the husband, were you on Tinder? And if he's a good guy and that actually was what it was, mm -hmm. he could just honestly explain that to her. True. And if they have a healthy relationship and that's their only issue, healthy communication could hopefully get them past that. That was very succinct and good. <laughs> <laughs> and an outlier could potentially be the maybe they're in an open marriage. That's a good point. They're exploring that. And I mean, that would probably be in his Tinder profile, though. So if she didn't mention that, it wasn't. But Still like, wouldn't hurt if they were in an open relationship, though. Yeah. Still would not hurt to tell her because then the girlfriend or wife now would simply be like, I know it's fine. OK, then you're convincing me. I think I changed my mind, especially like if she finds a way to do it anonymously, like she said, then I would just really cover your tracks there. I guess you're right. My first thought was... Oh, just tell her because it's fine. It doesn't matter. It's not mm -hmm. weird. But then you're right. They weren't actually friends. I do think OP should just treat this girl as a stranger, act as if it was a stranger. And I think that doing it anonymously is a great idea. What would you do in that situation if you were just married? You found out your husband of like two months was on Tinder before your wedding. I would be dussy. I would be dussy. I would be so <laughs> sad. I can't even imagine. I would be dussy the courthouse down. <laughs> I think that that is one of the worst things. I just think cheating is so bad. Is that technically cheating or is it just like it's giving like keeping your options open and I hate that energy. I think that cheating is subjective and people have different opinions on it. Mm -hmm. For example... One of the stories in a past episode was about going to a strip club. The boyfriend wanted to go. The girlfriend wasn't comfortable with it. Some people think that going to a strip club is cheating. And if you and your partner agree on that, yeah. it's cheating. If you and your partner agree that it's not and you can do that and it's fine, it's not cheating. Yeah. So Tinder, to me, cheating. Yeah. That's fricked. Tinder? That is fricked. That is fricked. Tinder? But that was it. Fricked another was word. another word that we did not stop saying once all weekend. If you're on Tinder and you're keeping your options open, absolutely not. How do you feel about like an app being on someone's phone? I think no. I actually... It has been so long since I started a new relationship, so maybe my opinion will change in the future. But yeah, I think that as soon as you have that conversation about are you talking to other people, that person should Delete. They, they should be deleted. Okay, Absolutely. agreed. Yeah, I feel like a classic though excuse is like, oh, I forgot it's on there, or like no. I don't go to that screen; it's too far in my phone. It's okay. Like, sure. <laughs> exactly. Okay. I was also thinking this. I think it's very easy to jump to conclusions and be like, of course, a man would say that he forgot to delete it because he never scrolls to that part of his phone. That might be true. Yeah. There are some good people that simply forget to do things. Yeah. Maybe they're so caught up in your great relationship that they didn't even think about Tinder. Dead. But it's like there's 8 <clears throat> billion people on the earth. Odds are some of them are going to forget. Yeah. To delete an app. Yeah. And doesn't mean they're cheating yeah so like that's fine mm -hmm. if it's true yeah if you're having honest communication and the person actually forgot and they're like oh sorry babe i totally forgot didn't even cross my mind let me do it right now right done done but it seems like it just doesn't go that way a lot of times <laughs> No. And certainly not for this this guy. Yeah. And I think especially if you're marrying this person, you're planning your wedding. Don't get married. That's a little different. Yeah. Why are you getting married? Like, you don't have to get married. <laughs> you really don't. If you want to go on Tinder, say goodbye to your girl and go on Tinder. Save her. Could not agree more. <laughs> save her the, the waste of time that you are, honestly. It's just so sad to me that they're like newly married that just reminded me of a time my friend and I went to a bar. We were both single at the time. We started talking to a bunch of guys. They were all super nice. We weren't being sexual with them or anything. We were just kind of casually hanging out. But then one of the guys kind of started hitting on one of my friends and everyone else was just like dancing, like lightheartedly having a good time. And this one guy pulls my friend and they're just 
sitting there talking for quite a while, just the two of them. She notices he's wearing a wedding ring. She's like, are you married? And he's like, yeah, I'm married and I have a kid. Okay. Definitely flirting with her. There is no question. Yeah. Anyway, night went on. Nothing happened. She and I went home. They went home. He followed her on Instagram and I'm pretty sure he DM'd her and this is what he said. I'm sorry. That was so wrong. I should have taken my ring off. Stop. I was not expecting that. His apology was that he should have taken his ring off before talking to her i thought you were gonna say he was like i have a wife sorry i was flirting you would you would hope but then he probably wouldn't have followed her on instagram yeah some people shouldn't be married no exactly it was shocking so i just imagine if that was my husband Mm -hmm. after talking to a girl at a bar he thought that the mistake that he made was not taking off his ring right not, That's not the fact he's... that he was just flirting with women. Exactly. Crazy. And there are probably a lot of men like that out mm-hmm. there. Which is scary. I'm never getting married. No. <laughs> yeah. So you know what? Fuck men. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think tell the girl. She should know. Okay. I would want to I'm on know. your side now. For women everywhere. <laughs> Period. The slay. <laughs> the next two stories are unhealthy friendships and... Big yikes. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. What does it mean when your friends constantly make fun of you? I am part of a friend group with awesome people, but there's one issue. They keep making fun of me. It's not even like lighthearted jokes that occur once or twice. It's constant jokes. My friends like to make fun of me by calling me lesbian or telling me to shut up or by mocking me. I don't know if this is normal in a friend group or if this is something I shouldn't brush off. I don't know if I should just suck it up and deal with it or if I should stand my ground. Today was the worst. My friend called me a bad name and I didn't know what to say. Everyone laughed, but I just stayed silent and I didn't speak. I'm scared to say anything because I think my friends would call me sensitive. Oh, please. <laughs> is that the end? Yeah. Okay, I have a lot of thoughts. That is, first of all, that is not normal. No. That made me really sad that OP had to ask if that was normal because friends should build you up and support you. And my biggest pet peeve... Well, one of them is when people are mean to you or like say something to you and then you react in a negative way and they're like, you're being sensitive. I cannot stand it. The gaslighting of it all. It's literally triggering. Insane. Because I'm a sensitive person. so Which is fine. It is is okay to be sensitive. Yeah. And I can recognize when I'm being overly sensitive in a situation. Sure. This does not sound like that at all. What did they say? She was, they were calling OP dumb. What's the word she used at the beginning? She said they'll tell OP to shut up and mock her yeah like friends mocking you is just that's bizarre behavior i feel like going back to the first post that we discussed a little tough love is needed here you cannot let them walk all over you and you can't be a pushover stand your ground this is not normal get new friends agreed xoxo (laughs) i think they're not your friends they are not surprise friends keyword here they are not your friends no they're your enemies (laughs) they're your enemies (laughs) kill them i'm just kidding Sorry. (laughs) Cut that out. Wink, wink. I have an example. Recently in my life, I have been trying to only maintain positive friendships that are mutually beneficial and very healthy. Yeah. And anyone that's kind of on the outskirts, I'm like, I just don't care. Sorry. I feel similarly. We only have so much time in life. Why the hell would I hang out with people that don't make me feel good? Yeah. Here's an example of something I think is similar to OP's story. Someone in a friend group that I am kind of a part of through like mutual friends. I hang out with them sometimes. There's a member of that friend group that always rubbed me as negative and their sense of humor is cutting people down and being mean to people and making fun of people. I've noticed that this person, the way they interact with another member of the friend group, it is only negative. Every joke that this person makes is at this other person's expense. They're never nice to the other person. They're never supportive. They never make a joke that's not mean. You're not funny. And this person will say things in group settings that are meant to be a joke and everyone will just be like, "Uh uh-huh, like what? We all started to notice this. I'm like, I'm not doing this anymore. I don't care. There's nothing positive coming from this person and I will try to be nice and supportive and I just do not get it back. So goodbye. I don't care. Goodbye. They clearly are dealing with a lot of insecurity and like have their own issues that they are putting on you. Or they're or, just mean. Or 
Yeah. <laughs> just a bad person. I'm always trying to like complicate it. And sometimes they're just mean. <laughs> yeah. I feel bad not giving people like the benefit of the doubt, but some people do just suck. Yeah. They some people do just, just suck. They just don't have the capacity to be a good person or a good yeah. friend. Yeah. And when you're 15 and 16, like you're not going to know all of those things. Yeah. To a certain extent as an adult, like absolutely not. I would never put up with that. Yeah, totally. And OP, you should not either. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then actually, I kind of want to compare the friendship that I just mentioned where there was just zero positivity coming from it and it was all negativity. Yeah. I have wonderful best friends that will rip me a new one if I do something embarrassing or yes. <laughs> they will rip me apart sometimes. Right. But 95% of the time, it's healthy. We're building each other up. We're rooting for yeah. each other. So yeah, obviously your friends are going to mess with you. For sure. That's fine. 95% of the time or 90% of the time, it should be filled with positivity and that will make it clear when they do mess with you or make jokes about you it will be clear that they are jokes yeah they don't mean these things yeah there's a difference between that and being like mean-spirited totally and just hitting someone where it hurts is like I just that's an evil person yeah like evil so I think that when you separate yourself from these people I don't think you'll miss them. No. Yeah, find new friends, which is like hard, but I believe in you, OP. But does see the yoga studio down. <laughs> Facts. Okay. On the same wavelength, discovered my roommate and friend talk shit about me behind my back. What to do from here? I'm a university student staying at the dorms for summer term. I'm pretty close with my roommate. Let's call her A. Our friend group all live in our building, and one friend in particular, let's call her B, is particularly close with A. I'm also planning on living in a dorm with B next semester. Within the past two weeks, I've caught on to the vibe that B has been distant whenever I talk to her. She doesn't make eye contact during our conversation doesn't smile or laugh like she does with other members of the friend group and never initiates with me. All of this is different from the very recent past. I tried to brush it aside but eventually was in a very bad headspace last night and I asked her if she hated me in which she replied she was just tired and didn't. Later yesterday night I had a panic attack and got paranoid in the middle of a bad high. I asked my roommate if she knew anything about friend B hating me but she convinced me that there was no way it was true. Flash forward to tonight I had reassured myself that maybe this was all my head but the chance came up where a's phone was unlocked i originally just wanted to stop a tiktok audio that was playing but ended up snooping their text messages i discovered they have been purposely excluding me from plans apparently b thinks i've been bad at respecting boundaries and a thinks my personality just emulates friends around me they have even planned to meet when i'm not around just to avoid seeing me because i'm annoying i genuinely thought they cared for me as friends so this came as a total shock i feel so guilty now and plan to do a lot of reflection just based on my behavior of invading my roommate's privacy and what I can improve on from the texts. The problem is I still feel so immensely hurt and betrayed. I had no idea they despised me to such an extent, especially since I tend to spend time with friends outside of our group a lot too. I trusted them to show a more vulnerable side of me. It hurts too that my roommate A would lie to me when she has also been talking behind my back. In the past, I've had issues with bullying where people have isolated me, so I'm starting to think maybe this is a me issue instead of pinning the blame on them. What would be the best course of action here? I don't think apologizing would cut it for my invasion of privacy, but at the same time, I should confront them in some way. Maybe I could distance myself. The issue is I still live with A for another month and a half and have agreed to a house agreement with B for next year. I have many thoughts. My first one, though. Me too. Is the whole like they say you don't respect boundaries and then you're going in the phone. Not a great look on your part. Um, also, the month and a half. That's not long at all. I thought she was going to say like a year left. Yeah. But the issue is having a house with B next year. But why did she agree if she hates you so much to ha like live with you for a year? Right. That doesn't add up because it's like they aren't being honest with you. Instead, they're just being mean girls. Mm -hmm. Hate that. And agreeing to live with you it makes zero sense they're lying I'm just, somewhere i'm trying to wrap my head around this because it, it just makes no sense maybe a is influencing b with her opinions about you and b actually secretly like likes you and that's why she agreed to live with you and maybe next year it's gonna be like you and b against a <laughs> 
but like break the cycle. <laughs> yeah. Something similar to this happened to me in college where I became friends with this friend group and then I brought other girls into it and I'd be like, come hang out with us, please. And they would be like, oh, we don't like those guys. Like, we're just not going to go. My roommate and I would always try to convince them. We'd be like, guys, please just come, just come. Finally, they started coming and hanging out with us and they were like, wait, I love these people. These girls just overnight decided that they did not like me, which is fine. Not everyone has you? to like, yes. Oh. Not everyone has to like you. If they yeah. just didn't like my personality, that's fine. I've met people that I'm like, like, you know, I respect you. I don't want to be your best friend. Yeah. You just same. don't get along with everyone. If they just simply did not like me and didn't want to be my friend, fine. One of them specifically would tell people that I was mean to her. And I'm like, okay. Right. I'm not. I am not mean to you. Yeah. If you just don't like me, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. But I am not mean to you. If, yeah. If you think I'm annoying, valid. <laughs> but... I feel like that this is a very similar situation. I just knew they would talk shit on me. One of them would tell me, oh, yeah, she doesn't like you. She talks shit on you when you're not here. I'm like, okay, awesome. Cool. Sick. So I separated myself from them. I never confronted her. The girl was just a bitch. She just was not a nice person. And I tried to be her friend at the beginning of college, freshman year. Tried to make an effort with her. Saw who she truly was. A shit talker. Someone mm -hmm. that lied to your face. Pretended to be your friend. And then had ulterior motives behind your back people are just like that people are just like that we all know yeah. that girl it sucks that i wasted my time with her and you know what i did live with her dead yeah. i also agreed to live with this girl mm -hmm. before our friendship kind of dissipated right it really wasn't that bad yeah you don't have to be best friends with your roommates agreed we were nice to each other's faces i never trusted her i just didn't make an effort with her she continued to talk shit on me i just don't care and then did not live with her after that year we went our separate ways and I never talked to her again and I just truly don't and care about it anymore. your life. Yeah. yeah. I made new friends that make me mm -hmm. feel happy that do not talk shit about me behind my back. They don't exclude me. Yeah. And I never think about her. So I think that's what OP has to do with these girls. It's just not worth it. Mm -hmm. And it might make you feel sad. It's almost like ending a toxic relationship when you end a friendship because when you end it, you're going to think back to all the good times and you're going to be like, wait, but they were a good friend because of X, Y, and Z. Yeah. They truly were not a good friend. This girl, B, does not sound like a good friend. Or A. They both sound like shitty yeah, friends. They and they do. I, and yeah, sure. You looking at their text messages was not the not best your finest thing. moment, but you were at a point where you were at a breaking point. What else were you going to do to find out the truth? They yeah. were lying to you. It's almost like meant to be that you read the text messages. So yeah. don't even feel bad about it. Just say that the universe showed you the text messages so that you could learn the truth and get the fuck out of there. Get out of there, except you're living with B. And so that's like an obstacle. People have roommates that they're not That they don't with, like. That's true. Yeah. I think OP has to get to a place where she acts like she doesn't care, like how you were describing yeah. in your situation because there's a good chance a and b the code names are so funny i know <laughs> a and b probably pick up on the fact that you care what they think of you and i think the sooner you get to a place where you have like bad bitch energy find new friends that lift you up mm -hmm. and move on from these toxic girlies yeah i think that if they think <clears throat> you're annoying you guys just aren't meant to be friends your personalities yeah. just don't vibe so i would not confront them at all mm -hmm. i would just go do your own thing distance yourself peacefully be amicable with them be nice to their face that's not you being fake it's just you trying to create a healthy environment right no drama yeah you don't have to try to be their friend, but you should try to make other friends, spend your time elsewhere, and then move out of this dorm in a month and a half. And when you move in with B, ask her on day one, is there anything that I can do for you to make living together more positive? That's a good idea. Yeah. And if she has an answer that's reasonable, I say go for it and continue to foster your other friendships. That's actually a good point, too, because college, like now that I'm thinking of the context of this, is like the place to meet people and make friends so yeah. you're not in a situation where it's going to be hard to meet people mm -hmm. like join clubs go to parties I made a lot of my friends through my major and classes yeah you have to make an effort but college is you're like handed friendships left and right mm -hmm. and you just gotta like soak them in That's so that you don't care as much about these little opinions yeah because also like them finding you annoying I feel like it's something you can't really fix like everyone's exactly. definition of annoying is different exactly. and there are people I'm sure people have found me extremely annoying and like I found people annoying who like other 
other people would disagree. Exactly. It's like we all have our threshold. Yeah. You just <laughs> have annoyance. personalities that you vibe with. Yeah. 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 So I wouldn't take that to heart at all. No, not at all. Yeah. The amount of people that think I'm annoying, but Same. I do still have friends. <laughs> That's great. You do. You have a lot of friends. I feel like I don't know if I have a lot, but I definitely I have like a do. solid group of really great ones. That's how I feel, too. Yeah. Yeah. My circle's getting smaller, which has only benefited me. Agree. I could not agree more. And now, basically, all my friends I am best friends with. I yeah. don't have many people that I'm just friends. Acquaint- yeah, I yeah, agree. Or acquaintances with. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I wouldn't take anything to heart. Live your life. You're not annoying. No. At least I don't think so. There's a quote that goes, you could be the sweetest peach in the world. There's always going to be somebody that doesn't like peaches. Oh, I'm going to cry. And that's just facts. That's slay. That is slay. It mm-hmm. is so fine Period. that you can be the best version of yourself and not everyone's going to like you. Mm-hmm. That's okay. So it makes me sad when she's like, I was looking through their text messages and they said I'm annoying, so I'm going to try to improve. No. 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 Unless they said, this is something she did to me that hurt me. Maybe you could say, oh, well, I didn't mean to hurt her. So how can I change my actions to reflect that in the future? Maybe. In that case. But if it's right. simply just they don't like your personality, <laughs> it's fine. No, but yeah. not everyone's going to. I've said it 25 times. It's fine if people don't like you. Mm-hmm. There are a million people that will like you. Go find them. Couldn't have said it better myself. Period. Period. And like that's a lesson that you can learn a hard way or an easy way. And I almost feel like learning it the hard way is like better. Like Wait, that, you, that you're not for everyone. Oh, yeah. You know, and you're learning it in college again where like you'll find so many friends. Yeah. And I think one more thing, if you can think back on your relationship with them and genuinely look at it and ask yourself, do you feel proud of how you interacted with them? And if you could start your friendship over, would you do anything differently? And if the answer is no, then say thank you and move on. Thank you. Good night. Yeah. If there's some things that you would have done differently, that's fine too. acknowledge them Mm -hmm. and do those things differently in your next friendship. Yeah. But you shouldn't have regrets. Everything's a learning experience. I look back at that girl that I met freshman year. Is there anything that I would have done differently? The only thing I would have done differently is separate myself from her sooner. Yeah. I would not have changed the way I treated her. I know that I tried to be a good friend to her. I tried to be welcoming to her into my friend group. Yeah. I tried to include her in everything that I did. I don't think that you need to improve yourself just because someone doesn't like you. Yeah, agreed. So, we could, do you. Yeah, do you. I could keep going about this, but I won't. I yeah. feel like we said it. Totally. <laughs> this one's on a different wavelength. My friends asked me to be a sperm donor, and I have no idea what to do. Like the title says, my friends have decided to become parents and asked me if I would be willing to be a sperm donor. They told me that my involvement was up to me. Ideally, I would be around for the kid in some capacity, especially if the child had questions, but they made clear those boundaries are up to me. I have no concerns about their ability to raise children since they already raised two and their dedication to being parents is absolute. I also have no concerns about any legal issues. We have a solid relationship and they are in significantly better financial shape than I am. They are ready. I'm 33 and have been single for about four years now. I had a near-death experience on my 33rd birthday and partially as a result of that, I am in the midst of some very big positive life changes that are really overdue. My last relationship ended badly, and since then, I have had a lot of trouble forming romantic attachments. My ex was vehemently opposed to having kids, so I decided back then that having kids wasn't going to be a part of my life. I have a lot of trouble imagining a future for myself where having kids happens right now as a result. I've thought about how being a sperm donor might affect my future relationships, and I think anyone who would hold a thing like that against me is someone I probably wouldn't want to be with anyway. I'm of two minds. One part of me has zero qualms and is leaning towards saying yes. The other part of me is worried about all the unknowns. How will I feel? How will it be like when the kid is old enough to ask these sorts of questions? When it comes down to it, they're having a child regardless. This is a huge compliment and a huge honor. I have some more questions for them that I've been writing down, but I know I can't think of everything. What sorts of questions are important in this situation? Am I overthinking this? Considering they told me the boundaries were up to me. I've been very scattered processing all of this and trying to think about what each future looks like um okay well I feel like you're in like a best case scenario situation like I thought you were gonna say something that was weird about the couple or your friendship with them but it sounds like your dilemma is simply a personal one I guess yeah I would do it yeah I feel like he kind of like through this explanation answered his own question and it kind of just sounds like he's 
looking for validation, but his mind is already kind of made up is what I was getting. You mentioned all of the green flags in the situation and how the boundaries are up to you. They're a great couple. You have no qualms. Like, I feel like you answered your own query. (laughs) I think this is an interesting question. My friends and I were talking about this recently. Would you feel comfortable donating your eggs or your sperm to a friend, like someone that you're going to see all the time? This situation seems more healthy. The parents are saying that the boundaries are up to the donor about how much he wants to be in their life. I feel like selling your eggs was always something that people said in high school and college. They'd be like, oh, just sell your eggs for money. It's like, well, it's not that simple. People were saying that in high school and college. (laughs) People didn't say that to you? No. Oh my God. I remember exactly who it was and what classroom it was in. In high school, a girl in my grade said that. She's like, yeah, I'm going to sell my eggs and you can get $30,000 and I'm going to pay for college with it. And I was like, did she do it? I don't know. <laughs> probably not. Yeah, probably I was not. like, that's genius. Yeah. And I looked into it and I was like, oh, <laughs> it's not that simple. Well, yeah, that's true. I guess I'm not like considering how once the kid is born and grows up, like you may grow attached to them. Yeah. And start to kind of wish things were different, especially now that I'm thinking about this a little bit more deeply. He had a prior relationship who didn't want kids. Yeah. So as part of you hoping that you're going to replicate like a father, son or daughter relationship with this kid, but you have to remember it's not yours. Exactly. I feel like that's the hard part because what if you want to keep it? And obviously legally you can't. It's not yours, but Mm -hmm. that would fuck you up, I think. And then it would ruin the friendship and like you think things are going to be fine now with this couple and your friendship with them but that's a very real possibility and it yeah. happens all the time and what if once you see this kid and you know it came partially from you you have opinions on how you think they should raise the child mm. and you have no right to give an opinion <sighs> yeah that's damn. so hard that's really hard especially or- knowing the. F- it all goes back to the fact that you are very close to this couple it's yeah. not like you donate and that's done you exactly. never have to see them talk to them like yeah. they're gonna be part of your life the kid and the couple it's interesting because if you were a sperm donor or an egg donor just at a random sperm bank they would just take your stuff and leave and it's possible it would never even get used Mm. i'm pretty sure do you still get paid yeah because i think that they have it in the bank and then if you want to go to the bank they'll show you the qualities of each person that it came from yes you're right yeah okay so they'll show you the medical history of the person that donated the right. sperm or the egg, that kind of thing. And their eye color, their hair color, height. It's yeah. like shopping for kids. I know. Maybe it's possible that you don't have to do that, but you can. Yeah. I would have to do, like, I don't know too much about this, I feel like, in yeah. general. But, like, this reminds me very, very loosely of Teen Mom season <laughs> one or two. Did you watch Teen Mom? I don't know. I don't think the so. The couple that had the open adoption and it was an issue because the mom wanted to see the kid. Yeah. Like, there there were just a lot of issues there. And it's obviously different, but, like, it's in the similar arena. Yeah. You know? Yeah, like, you could think, I just want to see this kid from a distance. They'll only know what they want to know as they get older. But you could very much feel differently once the child is here. What if you resent your friends forever? And then if you said, you know, you, you've decided you're not having your own kids. I don't know. I feel like it's, like, hitting a little too close to home for you. Yeah. And I would make a pros and cons list. Yeah. Like, I'd also take it old school. To, yeah. <laughs> I'd also talk to a therapist before making any decisions. I'm like, write down pros and cons. No, I think you should. But, but yeah, therapy too. <laughs> I just think it's interesting because I think it would be very easy for many people to think, would I donate my sperm or my egg to my friend? Of course. Like, that would yeah. be awesome. But then think about what it actually entails. It's so much more complicated. Yeah, it sounds complicated. I don't think I would now that I... I, don't, I wouldn't. <laughs> now that I've learned more about and thought about what life would be like. I don't know. I think I'm just a little bit too selfish. I don't know. I'm I'm too, like, emotional. Yeah. Too. Like, I'm just a very emotional person. Yeah. I just wouldn't be able to handle, like, yeah, no, I wouldn't. I definitely wouldn't. I wonder if it's different for guys. Okay, I think this is going to be a poll that we'll do on the Instagram story. Yes. So vote on that on the poll, but please think deeply about it before you vote. 
Yeah. Imagine please. having to watch the child be raised by your friend. And what if your friend does something where you're like, oh, don't do that to my kid. And it's, like, it's not yours. What if your friends decide? I mean, they said that boundaries are up to you. But what if they change their mind when the kid is born and they're like, we don't want him or her to know. And then what are you going to do? Yeah. Like, you're always going to go through life knowing you're technically the father of this child. Right. I just, I would have a hard time, like, not resenting that person. Yeah, totally. It's going to be a no for me. Yeah, I, I lean no. <laughs> that was interesting. Yeah. Is it weird that my friends are significantly younger than me? I'm 37 male. My two closest friends are 27 male and 23 male. Both of them work for me at a company I started. I have friends my age as well, but I don't see them all that often due to the fact that they all have families and careers and are now spread out around the country. I've been the CEO of a small company for the past 10 years. It has allowed me to hire friends from time to time in both part and full-time capacities. My job requires me to travel travel quite a bit, both domestically and internationally. I think it's a lot more fun and probably a lot more safe to do it with a buddy. Lately, I've been hearing a lot of criticism from my family and other friends about it. They think the age difference is weird and borderline creepy, but I haven't ever felt that way. There's never been any kind of romantic or physical dynamic or anything like that. They all seem to think that hanging out with younger people has caused me to not pursue serious relationships or care about settling down like my siblings have. It's caused a lot of self-doubt and a few heated arguments. I mean, clearly, I have some Peter Pan tendencies, but is it really creepy to have younger friends? Um, I think you get to a point, though, in your adult life overall where age, like, doesn't matter as much with Agreed. friendships however i wasn't prepared for the gap like 37 and 23 like what do you talk about i mean he does seem like he has a younger spirit in general so maybe he doesn't act 37 which is totally plausible i'm even thinking of interactions i've had with like gen zers where i'm like you're so different from me <laughs> and i just like don't know how to talk to you yeah and that's only like a five year age gap 23 to 37 that's over 10 years and like that's an older millennial younger gen z do you like have tiktok like what are you doing I think the fact that they work together, I think work relationships work, change yeah. everything. It You're is right. suddenly not weird. I see TikToks about that all the time. It'll be a high schooler and they'll be like, why is my work best friend a 55-year-old woman? Actually, and it just You're right. randomly works. I totally forgot the work of it all. Okay, yeah. I take all of that back. See, if this were a situation just in life, like this is someone you met at yoga class, a little, a little weirder. But yeah, work, like, those lines are so blurred. Yeah. Like, you just, you're friends with everyone. Yeah. Or enemies. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. It's one or the other. <laughs> I actually don't think that it's that weird as long as everyone is a consenting adult or it's just healthy. 37 is definitely way different than 23. And I think it, you did say something about maybe they don't act like a 37 year old. I feel like that is his problem or he doesn't see it as a problem, but his family and friends think it's a problem because they are saying that hanging out with these younger people is deterring him from settling down but not everyone has to settle down just because Agreed. they're 37 it's giving projection yeah where's the projector screen it's giving judgmental family yeah yeah it is <laughs> it's just like literally not even a metaphor like just straight up exactly what it is he has a judgmental family also like i've interacted with a good amount of people at in work environments at this point where like i feel like acting younger when you're older isn't always a bad thing mm -hmm. either and like having younger friends maybe you still go out a lot you don't have a significant other like who cares if you're yeah. happy and you have healthy relationships that aren't romantic and you have a good relationship with your family you know whatever the case is like I think you're doing fine yeah you don't have to like there are so many like societal norms you have to hit at a certain age where like no you don't yeah I just think True. you said it yourself these relationships are healthy there's no like there's nothing weird going on mm-hmm like work, yeah, it's like you enter a different universe sometimes with work people. Yeah. Where it, age is just not a factor. Agreed. I think there's absolutely nothing weird about this, especially because he said that it's not creepy. It is healthy. It's nothing romantic at all. It's literally they're just friends. And that's so normal. Mm -hmm. I feel bad that his family is being so judgmental. That is sad to me, too. Because yeah. also, like, at work, you really have to find your people in order to just, like, make it to 5 p.m. sometimes. Yeah. If you don't have those, like, close 
friendships at work it can be a really like i mean you do work you work more than you'd see family or Mm -hmm. hang out with friends or do anything else like america woohoo yeah so it's like you have to find those people that you click with and who cares if they're 15 years well a little less than that 12 years like younger than you right out of college one of my colleagues was 10 years older than me and we traveled together for work many times and we became such good friends and we were 10 years apart. Yeah. I was, what, 22 or 23 graduating college. And I'm still friends with her. Yeah. Especially if there's travel involved. You get so close with people and mm-hmm. really get to know when you travel with them. Like totally. share a bed with them in an Airbnb. Yep. I don't think there's anything weird about it. No. Also, I know someone that they had a house by the beach. And growing up, the two there was two families and the two sons of each family would surf together. They were like 12 years apart. Mm. They are best friends to this day. Cute. And the younger kid was a groomsman in the older guy's wedding. Mm. And he was in high school and the groom was like 27 or 28. Oh That's funny. It was so funny. I was so confused. Yeah. But then when you see the way that they interact and the young kid, their his whole family was there. Their families are friends. But the two guys, 13 years apart, at, at, about mm-hmm. or 10, 13 years apart, somewhere we in there. We love math. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. how. I truly don't even know how old they are. But they are truly <laughs> best friends. It just works. It's just yeah. healthy and who knows you know maybe if I met someone 12 years younger than me I'd also click with them on a weird level kismet yeah yeah sometimes it'd be like that yeah and screw others for judging agreed human connection is like not to get so deep but it's like it's so important and it's what we're all here for so if you found that with a 23 year old like so true (laughs) so true go off OP Okay. I hope OP is doing well. I, I hope, hope he gets over his judgmental family. And I hope if he wants love that he finds it. Yeah. Have your 23-year-old or 27-year-old friends like be your wingmen. That's yeah. that's fun. Totally. Also, especially because they're all guys. Yeah. A 37-year-old guy probably has the maturity level of a 23-year-old guy. I'm just kidding. Facts. <laughs> it's possible. Gee. Yeah, just subtract like 10 years. Yeah. So. Well, that would mean the 23 would be 13. Well, well you know what? <laughs> honestly, that's also true. <laughs> true. I say continue the friendships. Don't be weird. And but dusty your parents. <laughs> yes. But dusty the slack room. <laughs> Okay. This one's kind of long, but it's quite interesting. Ooh. <clears throat> Gold digger friend is after my dad. I am about to graduate college, 23 female. I have a friend who just graduated, 23 female. She's shown interest in my father, and I think she wants to either be friends with me for my family's money or to get closer with my dad. I come from a very wealthy family. My father is self-made. My parents were married before he became successful. I am very close with my parents, especially my dad, who is my biggest role model. My friend is really into older men, to the point where it's actually kind of creepy. She got her first real boyfriend when she was 18 or 19, and he was at least 34. That's an age gap that I think is problematic. That's really problematic, yeah. Yeah. No. However, some of the men she shows interest in are much older. She takes interest in men her own age, too, but she really wants men that have money, power, or both. Same. Just kidding. (laughs) Can you blame her? (laughs) She's definitely a gold digger and would put up with a relationship without love if she knew she was going to get money and gifts out of it. Story time. In the spring, we were both 22 at the time. I had VIP equivalent tickets for an event. My whole family goes along with our family friends and they allow me to bring some friends too. My parents provided hotel rooms for me and my friends since they knew we were all college students and couldn't afford it. And my mom made special food for our family and friends. I had some friends back out last minute, so I asked this girl if she wanted to come. I'd only known her for a few weeks but she seemed fun and friendly. She said yes. By the end of the event, I was actually a bit humiliated. She kept flirting with one of the cops that was on duty at the event. He was in his later 50s, so it was a little creepy. At first, we were trying to get her to get away because we could tell he was just trying to do his job. After her persistence for a while, he realized she was interested in him. At first, they were only a little flirty, and honestly, it was weird, but I figured it wasn't really my business. However, it got to the point where we would get worried because she would disappear for long periods at a time and wouldn't tell anyone where she was going, which seemed unsafe. We realized she kept going back to the cop. Later on, as my family and friends are waiting to leave, she won't stop talking to the cop. My whole family and all my friends are waiting in a group about 15 feet from where she is standing with the cop. I have to walk over to her and repeatedly try and give her the hint that it's time to come with us. She ignores me. Eventually, the conversation became inappropriate with him suggestively talking about handcuffing her. I also found out that she had even taken food from our table to give to him. I finally go over to her and say, hey, we need 
need to leave. Let's go. And then she finally comes with me. My parents were horrified. However, it was a long day in the hot sun with lots of alcohol. We suppose that maybe she got a little too drunk and we wouldn't hold it against her. I quietly tried to cut ties with her and remove her from my life. It seemed to be working, except I would still occasionally see her because we had mutual friends. I was polite, but I was not as social as I once was with her. I could tell this friend started taking more of an interest with me when she found out my parents were wealthy. I think it started with the event we went to. Then she found out my parents live part-time in another location. I think she started to put two and two together. All of a sudden, she got too excited to see me and was constantly telling me how much she missed me. We were not that close before, and I hadn't known her for that long. It really turned me off, as I wouldn't want to be friends with someone just because they want to benefit from my family's money. I haven't reached out to this friend at all, but when I see her, I'm polite, and if she messages, I'll answer, but keep it pretty short. However, she started saying inappropriate things about my father when I do see her. We both were at a game night together, and one of the cards asked who had the hottest parents she blurted out mine (laughs) savage she blurted out mine and talked about how pretty my mom was but said some things about my dad in a weird trying to be sexy voice i thought it was weird but i shrugged it off assuming she was just messing around however since then she keeps bringing up my dad she'll call him by his first name when she's talking about him and say it in a suggested voice like "Ooh, richard She straight up asked me what my dad did one time, and I vaguely answered he's a business executive. She started going on and on about how she bets he's so powerful and how attractive it is. All I said was that he's always nice, but he can be scary if he needs to be, and that I wouldn't try to mess with him. Hint, hint, bitch. (laughs) This just seemed to turn her on more. My parents are very happily married. My mom is wonderful and and doesn't deserve a gold-digging 23-year-old nipping at her marriage's heels. I know my dad thinks this girl is trashy and doesn't like her, but it's still really angers me she keeps talking about my dad and wanting to see my parents cough cough my dad again i posted about how excited i was that my father and i found a hard to get item it's designer for my mom for christmas the funny story of how we found it and how my mom was going to be excited when she got it she immediately swipes up on it and says i miss you and starts asking when my graduation party will be and how she wants to come i wasn't planning on inviting her hadn't mentioned it to her and hadn't posted anything about it i was very vague with her and told her i hadn't planned it yet which is true. I feel like she wants to come to my party to either get closer to me to benefit from my family's money or try to get closer to my dad. Also, I think I should mention my dad is almost 60. She does not have daddy issues. Not that it would make her behavior okay. How do I permanently cut ties with this girl out of my life? How do I handle the situation? I don't want to cause drama because I know she loves drama. I am super uncomfortable with her behavior. Wait, how did she come to the conclusion that this girl didn't have daddy issues again? Because I feel like she definitely does. <laughs> that was the first thing I was going to say. I feel like the sentence about daddy issues, it's funny that OP's like, she doesn't have them. Although it wouldn't yeah. justify her behavior. It's like, well, it, no, it wouldn't. But it that's, wouldn't, but it's she all, has she them. She probably does. <laughs> yeah. She clearly has them. Yeah. Yeah. She definitely has daddy issues. Or would this be considered a fetish? You're only into old men. I feel like that's not the correct word. You just have a type, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Men over 60. (laughs) Yeah. I think there's a very simple solution to this problem. Mm. Just don't be her friend. (laughs) They have a lot of mutual friends, it seems. So she's going to see her. Just avoid her at all costs definitely avoid her she seems so shady imagine somebody doing this to you that's also like disrespectful so disrespectful like it's kind of like funny and cute and i feel like the card game was kind of funny like you know if that was like the only instance like okay haha and richard is like one of those names where i'm like that's (laughs) but like so you're on the side of the gold (laughs) digger But it gets to a point where it's creepy and it's crossing a line and OP's mom is happily married. He's happily married. Like, what are you doing? You need to stop. And if she's not after the dad, she's definitely just after you for the money. I mean, she's not your friend. You don't talk to her for a while. And then when you post about your designer Christmas gifts, that's when she all of a sudden misses you. No. She just sucks. She sucks. I think that if you wanted to maintain a friendship with her for some reason, you could just say that the comments make you uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And if she doesn't respect that, cut her off. Yeah. If she respects it, maybe you can continue a friendship. But I don't think she's worth it. It doesn't sound respectful to me. No. Yeah, I don't think she knows what that word means. (laughs) It is crazy to me, though, that so OP said that this girl would accept a relationship without love if she knew she was going to get money and gifts out of it. I cannot relate. I cannot 
Also, it's giving like <laughs> royal energy. People marrying for money or it's it's just like very old fashioned. Mm -hmm. And we are so past that as a society. Like, I mean, whatever. I don't want to be judgy. Maybe she's in a really maybe to her money is like genuinely more important than love. OK. In which case, live your truth and okay. and do that. But don't drag other people down and don't try to like break up a marriage yeah. in, in your journey. It's sad, too, that she's clearly just using her and she doesn't care about you. She doesn't. She just wants the family's money. She wants to be invited to the events where she can stay in a hotel for free. Yeah. And go to the VIP section or whatever. Which, like, don't we all? But, like, yes. have some tact. I think, though, that sometimes when things like this happen, people forget that you just simply do not have to be friends with everyone. Yeah. It's so easy. It almost seems like OP is too nice to just cut her off. There can be people that you have mutual friends with that you can be nice to, give them a smile and Coexist, say hi. Coexist, yeah. Yeah. You don't have to be fake to them, mm -hmm. but you don't have to be their friend. No. And I think this is a good example. You can feel who your true friends are, and I think you can feel that this girl is not your friend. Yeah. It's time to cut the cord. <laughs> the singing sends me. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Cut her loose. Yeah. I think sometimes you just have to hear it from somebody else, and maybe OP will read back what she wrote and she'll be like what was I thinking yeah the concert thing was also weird right it was a concert it or seems like event. a charity event of course the charity yeah. events <laughs> that's where they all go down yeah you do not have to be friends with this person OP let us be the first to tell you because like you said I do think sometimes you need an unbiased third party to tell you that something is weird or not right and this is weird and not right also it seems like she's not giving you anything so you do not owe her anything true yeah so where are her feel... big charity events yeah <laughs> don't feel bad or what does she give to you as a friend yeah what are you gaining from the friendship it's sounding like not a lot yeah. Cut her off, bitch. Cut her right bitch. off. What to do. In love with my best friend. I'm 22 female, and I think I just realized I'm in love with my best friend, 22 female. We have been friends since high school. The friendship was intense, and a lot of people questioned it a lot, but I always rejected the idea that we would ever be anything romantic. I watched her love other people for years. She's had multiple boyfriends and flings. I have always stayed single. We stopped being friends for two years because of shitty friend problems. We recently reconnected and quickly went back to the way we were. I think I'm starting to realize that I am in love with her and kind of always have been. Maybe I always knew and just didn't want to admit it. She came out to me as bisexual recently, but I don't think this changes anything. I don't think she will ever see me romantically. It kills me inside to watch her with other people. She's my best friend. I love her. Our friendship means more to me than my romantic feelings. I don't want to lose her again, but I have been feeling the urge to tell her how I feel and be honest with my feelings feelings for once. I don't expect it to change anything. Should I confess? Should I risk it? By the way, I'm not out of the closet yet. No one close to me knows this. Mm, okay. A lot to unpack there. Wait, I feel like she writes so beautifully. I have watched her love other people over the years. That's low-key beautiful, but also sad and tragic. <laughs> That is pretty tragic. The way you read it too just like made me sad for her. Right? But I do think the line where she was like, I don't expect it to change anything. Yes, it would. It would change everything. That's well, like a very naive way to go about it. Like if you get to a point where you can't keep this inside anymore and you have to tell her how you feel, you very much should be prepared for an answer you don't want to hear and for it to blow up your friendship. Like this happens all the time. That's a good point. It is going to change everything. It is funny how she says our friendship it means more to me than my romantic feelings should I confess should I risk it but then she says I don't expect it to change anything right like it'll it'll change things whether it's good or bad or just neutral yeah even with how you feel about it it will change things mm -hmm. yeah I think she needs to again write a pro and con list this is like my advice for the night I love a pro and con list because it's like the worst that could happen the friendship is ended she's like freaked out mm -hmm. wants nothing to do with it and and you lost a friend one of the pros could be she feels the same way which it kind of sounds like she doesn't and you already answered your question but what if she does you never know true love always prevails yeah or it doesn't <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right she well I think she probably should tell her but just be prepared for it to fall apart mm -hmm. and just be prepared for the worst case scenario which is that the friend does not feel the same way and does not want to be friends anymore what would be worse losing the friend after being honest 
or living with the secret that's eating you alive. <laughs> Damn. But is it also eating her alive or is it something she will outgrow with more experiences? Exactly. I think in her head right now, it's like, oh my God, this is like the love of my life. Yeah. I can't live with this anymore. I have to tell her. I think what she should do, date other people. This person is not the end all be all. And you're like convincing yourself. I don't know. I feel like this is one of those situations that's very romanticized in our culture. Like the friend to lover whole storyline. The enemies to lovers arc. (laughs) Yes. Which we love to see it. Wait, what's that show? Vampire Diaries. Do you have you watched? No. Okay. Well, that's a very classic example of something like this. Not really, but like um <laughs> or just like a friends to romantic partners, however that may look. Right. I just don't think it's always it's like not reality and to move on. Okay. I I totally agree that this girl is probably in love with an idea of the yes, friend in some way. Totally. Which is tough. But OP said, I think I'm starting to realize that I'm in love with her and I kind of always had been. Maybe I just didn't want to admit it. Another question. If you are in love with this girl and she is not in love with you is that actually your best friend or is that (laughs) do you know what I mean because like okay okay wait (laughs) this may be very confusing to explain this what I mean by this but I'll follow let's say I had a crush on a guy and I knew he didn't like me back Mm -hmm. I think that if I became friends with him at least I would have him in my life in some capacity and I'm in love with him in my head I'm like oh my god he's perfect blah 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 he's my best friend would you be best friends if you weren't romantically interested in that I see what you mean or are you creating this friendship because you are in love with her the friendship is your attempt at creating at least some sort of relationship with them because some relationship is better than none in your head okay i see she needs to separate then the friendship and what makes up a good friendship with this girl versus your romantic feelings like right separation needs to happen i think it's very interesting to think about what is involved in a friendship and what is involved in a romantic relationship because i don't think i know wait it's yeah i kind of don't think i know because i'm thinking about a boyfriend and i'm like yeah i love everything about you and then i'm thinking about my best friend and i'm like i love everything about you but do you want to like make out with your best no friend? is that the only thing though i feel like that's the only thing is it just is that is- really dumb to say like i don't know i because you know people are always like marry your best friend so it's like okay can guys and girls be friends platonically can you be platonically friends with someone that you could possibly be romantically interested in right like yes i feel like people do that all the time it just is like modern day life i agree i totally agree with this um i have a lot of guy friends Mm -hmm. of my two closest friends one of them's a guy one of them's a girl and the guy and i have never had anything more than just we are best friends yeah so I say yes I've heard the point of if you are very physically attracted to your best guy friend would you not be romantically interested in them do you know what I mean so picture your best guy friend when you met them Like, not now when you have settled into your platonic friendship, but, like, when you first met them, if they were the hottest guy you've ever seen, you love everything about them. They're your best friend. How would you not be romantically interested in them? See, okay, this is a really outlandish example. Harry Styles. Could I be platonically friends with him? I really think I could. Like, I think you can objectively see someone as attractive. It doesn't mean you always forever want to sleep with them. Sometimes it's like, okay, I recognize that I'm attracted to you and it, like, cool, sick. But, like, friendship can trump those thoughts and feelings. Okay, I think so, too. I think I'm just trying to figure it out. But I I did think that was an interesting point when it's like, yes, girls and guys can be friends. But what if they are attracted to each other? But I guess that's not friendship then. That's something else. That's the answer. <laughs> it's such a hard line. Also, this is so sad. No, it's a but... soft line. The line is soft. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> no, it's very, very soft. There's no line. The line is basically invisible. <laughs> it kind of is, though. Also, last year... I met a few of like friends of friends guys and one of them was saying that anytime a guy is friends with a girl he doesn't actually care to be friends with her in his mind he's like when will she sleep with me I just don't think that's true 
how old like, is this person? Twenty one. He was our age. Okay, so and I like twenty one like, in in the med in the head. Sure, like fourteen <laughs> in in. I was gonna say in dog years. Oh, oh. what's the difference? <laughs> Just kidding. I was like, I can think of my my friend group. We are best of friends. Mm-hmm. None of them. No, I promise. None of them want me in any way. Yeah. Other than friendship, and I feel the same about them. Yeah, and it honestly it disgusts me to think about. That. <laughs> That's how you know, right? Yeah, no. But it's I... like I adore you. I I adore them. They're right. the best people I know. Yeah. The thought of touching them physically, remit, horrible, <laughs> disgusting. Yeah, because you get to a point with friends like that where you're like, you're my family. Yeah. And like, no thanks. Yes. I do think though with OP, this is like a very different situation. Yeah. I think I just went on a tangent. No, that was a fun tangent. Yeah. It was interesting, but I, okay. Gonna so like, pull it back to But my... the thesis of this is like, can you be friends with someone you're attracted to? I think yes. I think yes. To, yeah. I think that's the thesis of, of the tangent. Yeah. But like, again, with OP, it can, I think it's deeper than just like a physical attraction. Like you clearly are in love with all of her. And that's yeah. where it's true because no I don't think you can be friends I think that's gonna come to a point where you're like it's like all consuming Mm -hmm. and it's gonna ruin like no and she said it hurts her to see her with other yeah, people. You're way too in. You're in too deep. Yeah. Wait. This Wait. Just the Drake me... song "In Too Deep" is so good. By the way, I don't know it. You should I'm listen, to, listen it. to it. Okay. <laughs> this just made me think of a story. I don't know where I heard this. Might have been on another podcast. But there were twins. They grew up. Um, a boy and a girl mm-hmm. grew up. Normal life. Whatever. Best friends. Did their whole life together. Eventually, the guy moved away and kind of just went off the face of the earth. Cut ties with the family, and they were like where did he go and the sister was mourning the loss of her brother my god best friend he just up and left Mm -hmm. maybe left them a note or something i don't know but then he wrote a letter to the sister and he was like i'm so sorry i have romantic feelings for you i am so sick in the head i'm in another town i'm in therapy i'm trying to get help i am doing what i need to do right now and i cannot see you all these crazy things in that horrifying situation the brother recognized that he had a problem and he was like this is not your problem i'm gonna go deal with myself Mm -hmm. somewhere else because i can't live like this anymore i almost feel like op has to do the same thing yeah she has to be honest first of all and say hey I know this might not be reciprocated but I have to tell you the truth I have romantic feelings for you do you feel the same way if the friend says yes queen go off queen if the friend says no OP I think would be in her right to say I totally understand I for my own mental health just need to distance myself from you for a while just to get over these feelings and get past it it's hard for me currently to watch you with other people so I'm gonna go on my own path for a bit heal from this get over it and then maybe we can reconnect in the future kind of like what the brother did I agree except in reverse like I think she should go on her own path first before telling the friend but what if the friend feels the same way but I just from her post I'm really not getting that vibe but you really don't know I know I don't know I'm being cynical yeah I think it wouldn't hurt to ask because you need to be honest with your friend about why you're distancing yourself anyway if you have a very healthy yeah. relationship. Yeah, you're right. She can't really do that without being obvious, I feel like. Yeah. So totally. Blow up the friendship girly. <laughs> Blow it up. Yeah, that's wild. I hope she's also in love with you though. And if not, I hope you find inner peace. Yes, totally. Not to repeat exactly what I just said, <laughs> but I I kind of think you're not actually friends with her in a in a way. No, it's yeah. Like, She's not really your your best friend. You're just using this friendship Mm -hmm. to justify staying in her life in some capacity. And it's getting to the point where it's not enough. Damn, that was deep. That was good. I feel like that's the truth. I feel like that's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. So tell her. The truth will out. And then, yeah, get out of there, I Mm -hmm. think, if the feelings aren't reciprocated. Yeah. Get out of Dodge. One more wholesome one. Well, the story itself is not wholesome, but I know what we're going to say about it will be. Okay. All my friends do is drink. So I love my friends and I've been close with some of them for around 10 years, but all they ever do is drink and I'm over it. I'm an adventurous person and I always want to do new things, go to new places, but all they look forward to on weekends is getting together and blacking out. I'm tired of spending money and energy doing this. I also have MS, so I want to start living as healthy as I can and they're aware of this, but every time I tell them I'm not going to drink, it's always a big deal. They never want to do 
other things that I suggest unless they can drink there. I know I'm growing out of some of my friends, but I honestly don't know how to make more where I live. I've tried Bumble BFF and it hasn't worked well for me. There are no online groups to meet up with people or anything like that in my area. Making friends as an adult is rough, lol. Plus, I just went through a big breakup a couple months ago, so being alone is also rough. I'm at a loss for what to do. That made me really sad. Yeah. And I could. This is a topic I get like passionate about Love. severely. The drinking thing or like drugs. It's all related. I was talking about this with a friend this summer saying how like I hate when you're at a party or just any social environment and like people are really like pushing their agenda on you. But I hate like feeling pressured. I just feel like she didn't say how old she was, did she? No. So maybe she's younger. But either way, like, I don't know, like you're 26, I'm 27. Like, can we all just like do what we want to do? Yeah. And if you're being a wet blanket, that's one thing. (laughs) But like, it doesn't sound like this is the case. She seems very secure in her decision. She has health issues. MS is serious. Like, if she doesn't want to drink, regardless of the reason, but especially if you are dealing with health issues and you have, like, more legit, I use that in quotes, reason, like, just lay off. Yeah. And I doubt that she's any less fun. I think people tend to project in these situations and, like, oh, I'm getting this drunk or I'm making these choices, so you have to or I'm going to feel bad about it. And that's, like not your problem yeah you know i think it's so sad that so many friend groups are based around drinking to the extent where a lot of people do not hang out with their friends unless they are drinking or doing drugs like smoking whatever yeah everyone listening and us think about the last time you hung out with your friend group sober there was a time years ago where my friends We hung out sober and we were like, holy shit, like we have not hung out sober in so long. And now we do way more often. It's one thing if it's natural, like if you go out with people and it's always like a dinner plan, a happy hour, Mm -hmm. that's one thing. But like if it always has to be like rage, 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 like we're getting drunk kind of drinking and like I can't engage with you otherwise, then that's a severe problem problem yeah i think so too and yeah i'm like what are you trying to make up for does your personality suck (laughs) i think yeah people are just boring and they don't want to do stuff that doesn't involve drinking Mm -hmm. i think i hang out with friends now a lot without drinking and it's so fun yeah doing activities Mm -hmm. and a lot of my friends we've been talking about recently making a list of things that we can do that don't involve alcohol and i'm excited to do them all yeah and it's possible but it's obviously hard when your friend group of years and years doesn't want to do the things that you're now interested in so I think you have to make new friends and you can it's a hundred percent so hard but it is possible it is hard but I think in my experience recently especially um since I moved out of my parents house I thought it was going to be a lot harder than it was to meet new people and it really happened so organically yeah I also think I got a little lucky with that just based on location and like friends of friends like that's how we met Mm mm-hmm And this girl, like, if all of her friends suck, like, I don't know how you meet friends of friends who don't suck in that situation. One more thought about the fact that you tried to stop drinking and they didn't support that. I used to know someone who decided to stop drinking and he said that when he would say that to his friends, his friends would be like, oh, like, why? Come on. Don't be a pussy. Just like have a beer, blah, blah, blah. That's not a good friend. No. If you want to say, I don't want to drink tonight, your friend should be like, oh, cool. I now have a friend that doesn't drink. And when he decided to stop drinking, it takes a while to get into the habit of not like handing your friend a drink. But it is so simple. Do you want to drink? And if they say no, or if they say no, I don't drink. Everyone I hang out with now would be like, do you want a soda? Like, or yeah. like, do you want a water? Like, leave them alone. I cannot imagine hanging out with people that would try to make you feel bad about not drinking. Yeah. Like, of course, there's times where if everyone's yeah. drinking and everyone's say having that. fun, like, yeah, like last weekend, I was like, oh, I'm tired. And everyone's yeah, like, same. you got to take a shot. But yeah. if I truly said, guys, I'm not drinking tonight. Yeah. I'll still go out and have fun. Yep. I've I'll had hang so out. many nights like that. Yeah. yeah. I know my friends aren't going to be like, don't be a pussy. Like, just drink. Like, yeah. There's, no. There's like a line there. Like, I feel like you were saying like last weekend, everyone was doing jello shots like out the wazoo. And like, <laughs> it was like funny to a certain extent. It's like, oh, come on. Like, do one. Yeah. But I feel like 
you can tell when someone is clearly like checked out yeah and tapped out and just like wants to like be done yeah agreed i don't have friends that would ever like force me necessarily it's always like people who are like ancillary figures in your life totally i'm just like first of all like you don't know me like that and second of all why is it a problem exactly i just don't get why people get so bothered by others not participating to the level that they are especially with drinking yes it would be one thing if you were doing a very healthy activity and someone continued to refuse to do anything healthy but drinking alcohol is the only drug that you have to explain why you don't do it Mm, yeah whereas every other drug you kind of have to explain why you do it weed you mean or just in general so if you don't drink somebody would be like oh why don't you drink oh, that's I get but what you if mean. you don't do drugs no one's gonna be like why don't you do cocaine or- and alcohol's arguably worse and not worse but it's like on the same level as a lot of drugs drugs so yeah i don't understand that either but again it's coming from a place i think of feeling insecure yeah about their own choices mm-hmm making it your problem so true and it's just not your it's always the people too who are like so secure in their decision to not participate and it's like no i'm good like i'll have a diet coke and like live my life and still be fun Mm -hmm. participate show up but like somehow it's always a problem for someone yeah it's so true i remember one time when some high school friends of mine Mm -hmm. we all went to college we all came back for christmas or whatever holidays and one of the guys was like oh i started dating this girl and i was like oh that's awesome like let me see a picture what she like I remember he said she doesn't drink she's still so fun though she is the life of the party like even without alcohol I was like you could have just ended with she doesn't drink nothing weird about that no you didn't even have to tell me that right (laughs) like why does it have to be a whole thing yeah it's funny because my goal with this prompt was not even to highlight how drinking culture is kind of absurd but it is it's absurd in high school I had a friend who just like never I didn't drink in high school but like even through college like she didn't drink Mm -hmm. and when she turned 21 she went out but like again like has chosen to just like be sober yeah and I feel like that's also something people can't take and accept is like yeah I'm choosing not to do things not for any reason. It's just I don't want to do them. Yeah. And people have a really hard time with that. So true. And it's something I've dealt with not with alcohol, but just, I don't know, just like let people like make their own choices. Like you're making a choice and I'm not judging you. Don't judge me for making the weirder choice or the less conventional choice. Yeah. Completely agree. Yeah. That's such a good point. Let people live. Another point in this story, though, is the idea of making friends as an adult, which is so hard. But. I do feel like I have made friends recently, so I wanted to share a few tips about how I've made friends and also hear about how you have. Rebecca and I became friends through mutual friends. Mm -hmm. Like you said, when your friends are shitty... The people they know maybe might, might be shitty too. Yeah. I mean, maybe not. Yeah. But I wouldn't bank on that. Right. We have a list of tips. I made a list. Something that I've experienced so much in the past four years is shifting my friend group from people that I would hang out with them and then I would go home and I would have anxiety. And I think, oh my God, did I talk too much? I'm so loud. I need to stop. I need to relax. Like, stop showing so much energy. Stop yeah. yelling about the things you're excited about. No. No. I'm a loud person. Nothing wrong with it. No. You don't have to like it. You also don't have to hang out with me. Yep. The people that like it will hang out with me. Yeah. And that's great. So <laughs> I've just realized that you just do not <laughs> need to continue friendships with people that don't make you feel good. Yep. So I've been putting a lot of energy into removing people from my life and giving more energy to people that make me feel good. Yeah. So some of the ways that I have met people or I would suggest trying these things to meet people. Mm-hmm. One of them, join an adult sports league. There are yes. so many and That's you can join as a single player and then you just get put on a baseball team or a basketball team yeah and it's a healthy activity mm-hmm. going to a gym it obviously can be hard if you're just doing an individual workout but go to a workout class and then mm-hmm. if you see the same people in it every time be like oh my god you know bond over something in the class and then ask the other girls or guys would you want to go grab coffee after this sometime if you're not going back to work or whatever yeah see where it goes this is Maybe controversial, but Instagram. I have made friends off of Instagram. You have, yeah. Multiple times. And 
specifically one girl we met on instagram met up in a coffee shop one time the second time we hung out she was sleeping over my house in a different state i love that yeah and we're still friends to this day how did you like slide into her dms so we were both into surfing and i actually posted on my instagram that said if there are more girls in this area that surf please reach out to me i want more girlfriends and she she dm'd me and said i surf let's be friends that's really cute yeah yeah so maybe if there's something specific that you want to try you can post on instagram and say does anyone want to go on a hike or want to do x y and z i don't have to know you but share with your friends or yeah reach out kind of going off of that i don't think it's weird at all to just reach out to people especially if you met them like once or twice or they're mutual friends friends of friends whatever Mm -hmm. people that you see at the gym that you see in these activities that you do and just be like hey i feel like we would get along would you want to grab dinner or go on a walk sometime and just meet people and if they say no that's fine and if you meet them and go on a walk or coffee date with them and you guys don't vibe don't get discouraged just try it again with somebody else (laughs) eventually it will work one more thing all these activities that you want to do and you're asking your friends do you want to do them and they don't just go and do them by yourself yep i used to be so scared to do things by myself and once i started doing them i'm like oh i'm fine it's the best yeah and you will meet people doing it i used to surf by myself and I met people surfing. I was so scared to go Mm -hmm. snowboarding alone but I had absolutely no one to go with. And I was like, I can't wait around Mm -hmm. and hope that somebody else that I know will want to do this activity that I want to do and their schedule will line up with mine. And so I started going snowboarding by myself and I have so much fun. Mm -hmm. I know that's not really the point of OP's concern in her story. Like she wants friends to do these things with. Challenge yourself to do it by yourself. Meet people while you're there. Because those are the people that are doing the activity that you want to do yep so if you want to go on hikes you need to stop going to your friends parties you need to start yes. going on hikes because the people that go on hikes are on the hikes yes so uh, totally. go and do the things you want to do i'm like getting so excited because i'm thinking yeah. about going snowboarding <laughs> and like going surfing no i love that advice i think it's also like the more you work on yourself do your own thing create your own life make your own hobbies people will naturally come to you almost that is so true and it sounds fake but it's it's true like Mm -hmm. it's happened to me and you just got to focus on yourself the energy that you have focusing on these friends who are like making you drink and like not really your friends put that energy towards finding those people and like doing those things that make you happy because they are out there yeah and you just gotta like put yourself out there it's really hard it doesn't always feel like easy or natural but I think the payoff is a lot greater than these people. I mean, anything is greater than these people, it sounds like. Wait, that was so sweet how you said the payoff of doing these hard things is going to be greater than what you're doing now. And it's so true. Like, invest in yourself. Yeah. Because, like, I feel like a lot of these things, too, are kind of expensive or, like, workout classes. Like, I feel like to make friends with these things, you have to go consistently. But Okay, that's a good point. I don't know. Like, I think it's it's an investment in yourself, in your circle. And there are are things that you can do that are free oh yeah like totally. going and playing basketball at a park it's free going on a hike is free mm-hmm. and I know a lot of the things that I'm saying are physical activities that not everyone can do yeah so I understand that I think the same thing is true there are things that you can do that are free that you can get involved in I'm sure your township has events at the community volunteer. center yeah you can volunteer meet yeah. people that way there are so many things that you can get involved in go on Facebook and look up events happening in my area go alone and start talking to people it's gonna be so scary to go alone but the second time there's an event now you're gonna have people to go with exactly I think in these situations you're always in your head and you think everyone's looking at like the weird girl who's by herself no one cares no one cares everyone is too focused on themselves no one is thinking that and also if you are feeling awkward you'll never see those people again probably you never have to yeah Yeah, if you don't want to so so if you have a bad experience, go home, sleep it off, and then try again. <laughs> so true. So true. Now I'm just advocating for doing things alone. Going off of what Rebecca said, when you do the things that you want to do, that's when you live your best life and people will see that and feel your energy and yep. be drawn to you. Who knows? Maybe when you go and start doing these activities that you ask your friends to be a part of, they're going to see how much fun you're having. They're not going to be able to help themselves. They're just going to want 
want to come yeah. and be with you if they're the right people for you. Agreed. So do things alone. Put yourself out there. I think doing activities like that is just where you should start. But shed these fair weather, peer pressure friends. They are not yeah. your friends. I feel like that's like our thesis of the night. Like I think so too. These people are not any of OP's friends. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's so true. I don't want to just repeat what you just said, but I think people use this word friend and then they show the evidence. It's like, that's not that's a not friend. It. That's not what a friend would do. No. That's what an acquaintance who doesn't give a shit about you would do. Yeah. Also, one more wholesome piece of advice that I've already said 37 times. You don't owe anyone anything. If mm-hmm. people are not making you feel good, cut them off. Mm-hmm. If they think you're mean for cutting them off, so be it. You're doing what you have to do to preserve your energy and live your truest life and surround yourself with people that make you happy. Yeah. And it is hard. I think cutting people off is easier said than done. Even in situations like this where people are clearly exhibiting toxic behaviors, maybe they're your friend from childhood or maybe you had a really good experience with them one time and you're holding on to that. Do not hold on to that. Yeah. You know, there are better people for you. Totally. That was redundant to whatever you just said, but. (laughs) No, it's fine. My mind is like so spinning right now with like the same sentence over and over and over again you're so right it is easier said than done when i said oh just you know cut the people off and who the fuck cares the friendships of mine that have ended because they weren't healthy it wasn't just like one day i woke up and i was like you know what fuck you i'm never talking to you again right when i did finally take the step and stop reaching out to them or if i had mutual friends with them and my mutual friend would say oh do you want to hang out all in a group i would just say oh i'd rather just hang out with you one-on-one yeah and just you you can hang out with them at another time. Yeah, that's good. That's a good point. And just be honest about how you feel if people ask, but you don't always have to confront people. You mm-hmm. can just go and live your best life and just peacefully with a smile say goodbye or never say anything again. Say to goodbye. That, yeah. To people that don't treat you well. <laughs> Our <laughs> album is dropping soon. We slayed. I think we slayed. Here we go. We dussied. We bedussy a seed. This episode's just gonna bedussy, I think. <laughs> this episode is sponsored by real friends real friends how many of them how many? Hey. <laughs> okay you guys thank you so much for listening to our podcast this was so much fun this was so fun i think it was so successful especially yeah. first time okay is this my calling i think so <laughs> i think do the activities you want to do baby <laughs> we're doing oh my god we are we're freaking doing, we're doing it, it. Babe. <laughs> Uh, I love we're not okay <laughs> no we're not I feel like I'm just like so stoked right now like I just want to like go Same. make friends or I go, know go say something to my friends I think I just want to go give advice now I know to, like oh everyone God. I see we kind of did slay though I hope this advice was good advice and I hope it reaches the OPs yeah or I hope there's other people that or, yeah. are in situations like that and sometimes it just takes somebody else saying something that's so simple yep for you to be like oh yeah why did I think that yep I'm like stuck on the roommate one just because that was so obvious uh, to me. I know. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast. Rebecca will be back soon. I hope. Of course. <laughs> We're so excited about the podcast. And one more thing. I just want to clarify this in a few of the beginning episodes. It's quite possible that we are wrong about some of the things oh, we said. Yeah. Just and that's okay. Her. Yeah. No, that's okay. Yeah. I am not scared of being wrong. I think that everything that we say, it's our opinion. It's what mm-hmm. we think right now. Our minds can change. They will change about certain things. If we're presented with new information, we may change our opinions. And that's okay. If you think that we're wrong, politely tell us and let's <laughs> let's chat, you know? Follow Stop the Internet on Instagram Facts. and wherever podcasts are found. Yes, and share with your friends because we need listeners. We're trying to create a healthy community of friends. If you need friends, (laughs) follow Stop the Internet on Instagram. Perfect. Period. (laughs) Period. (laughs) Okay. Shall we end it? Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks again. Thanks. For listening to our podcast. Love ya. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Toodles. Bye.